Hi, this is Louis from The Fun Accountant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the problem of getting a large quantity of bank transactions from multiple PDF file formats into Sage Accounting by importing a single file. Once these bank transactions are in the Sage Accounting system, it can be allocated to the different categories of income, expenses, customers and suppliers. With this video, I'm going to prove why the site's banking accounting software is one of the easiest to work with and the most efficient accounting systems on the market. I'm going to use a set of a full year's bank statement transactions received in 12 PDF files, one for each month from a client who needs these transactions to be recorded. Years back, when I did my accounting training, bookkeepers had to capture these type of transactions by hand on an accounting program. Later in the video, you will see that there are 580 transactions in this example. It simply will be too costly to manually capture this bank data, also considering the errors that are going to be made. There is a much faster way of doing this task while also eliminating errors. We are going to start by using Dext online software to extract the bank data by uploading the PDF files. Then we are going to download the processed and converted Excel bank statements from Dext. Our third step is to combine all 12 months bank data in a single file while ensuring that the bank balances on an ongoing basis. I am going to show you a set of simple procedures to follow in order to achieve a seamless import that you can employ in your business to get fast efficient results. The next step will be to prepare the data for the site's import. I'm going to share important information that will help you to avoid certain pitfalls and ensure a smooth import of your data into Sage Banking. Lastly, in step five, I'm going to get all the transactions for the year into Sage with a single import. Let's get started, shall we? Here are the 12 months PDF bank statements received and downloaded onto my PC, ready to be uploaded to Dext. On the top navigation bar, click on the green plus add documents button. Another menu will open on the right. Click on the bank button at the top that will turn orange. Accept the charges which are charged per page converted from PDF into an Excel file format. Select the bank account name from the list. If your bank is not listed, add it to the bank list first and then come back to the screen. Drag and drop the PDF files from where you have saved it to the green block. I'm only going to upload one file for now, but you can upload all 12 files at once. You will get a message, document uploaded successfully, and that you can find the extracted document in the collected statements area of the bank. I am going to close this section and on the left side navigation bar under the bank heading, you have the collected statements. There you can follow the progress of the extraction process. When the extraction is completed, the file will be saved under the process statement section, also on the left navigation bar. All the details of the file is revealed, like the starting date and ending date of the transactions, as well as the opening and closing balances of the bank. I have received the bank statements in monthly PDF files, and I'm now going to follow the same process with the other month's files once that is completed, all the files for the year can be seen under the Processed Statements section. To combine all the data in a single file, I'm going to download each period's file to my PC by clicking on the green Download button. Here I'm going to give you an important tip, and that is to mark each file by clicking on the checkbox next to the blue file name. This will ensure that you know which files you have already downloaded and not to get confused with what you have done and haven't done so far. I am going to do the same for each month until I have downloaded all the files in a financial year which starts on the 1st of March 2021 and ends on the last day of February 2022. All the downloaded files in Excel format can be viewed in my downloads folder. From Excel, we can easily change the file format to CSV, which is the format needed for a site's import. I'm going to open the first month's file 
for March 2021. Then I'm going back to the downloads folder and opening the next month's file from April 2021 to the 1st of May 2022. We select all the transactions for the period. Copy the selected area with Ctrl V, go back and select the previous month's file and paste the transactions copied under the last transaction line. Here comes an important part and that is to ensure that our balance agrees with the data copied into the file. For us to check that we balance, I'm simply going to recalculate the balance by taking the previous month's closing balance in cell E72, add the receipts column cell D73 and deduct the payments column in cell C73 and press enter. This calculated balance of 15,663 must agree with the actual bank statement balance in cell E73. As you can see, the two balances agree. Then we copy the formula right to the bottom so that we can note any discrepancies of the calculated balance versus the bank statement balances. As we scroll right to the bottom of the data and the last day of the bank transactions, you can see that the balances agree. This step is very important as it removes any doubt about the integrity of the data and gives you confidence that there are no errors and that all the transactions are included. It is important to obtain this assurance early on in the import process because finding the cause of an error much later will be extremely difficult and time consuming as you have to backtrack all the steps that you have taken. Many things can go wrong. For example, you may exclude a line from being copied to your data. The process is repeated again by opening the next month's Excel file. Select all the transaction data. Copy it and paste it into the file containing the previous two months data. This file is going to contain all our transactions for the year and we distinguish it from our other data files by saving it under a different name. I'm going to rename the file to import demo. Now I copy the balance check formula in the same column down to the last entry and check that the balance still agrees with the bank balance. I'm going to repeat the process of copying all the month's data into the single import file. To save time showing you this process, I'm going to fast track the recording right to where I have completed bringing all the data across into the import file. Finally, I have copied all the data over and the import file now contains the whole year's bank transactions. To ensure that I have all the transactions from the beginning of the financial year, I'm going to check the last bank reconciliation. According to the bank reconciliation of the last day of the previous financial year, at 28 February 21, the bank balance and the computer balance must be 6,329. Going back to the top of the data to the first entry of the year, I can clearly see that the opening balance is 3,165 Rand. And seeing that the transaction starts on the second day of March, my guess is that we are missing the transactions of the first day. These transactions were probably included in the previous bank statement and deleted to only include up to 28 February 2021. To get the file containing the missing transactions, I'm going back to Dex, where the converted data files are stored under the processed statement section. By looking at the dates of the file, I can trace the file by going to page 2 on Dex. The file with the opening date of 2nd February 2021 and the closing date of 1st of March 2021 is the third one from the bottom. I click on the green download button 
and then I find the file under the downloads folder from where I open it. Right at the bottom, the last three transactions were executed on the 1st of March and need to be copied into the Sage import file. First we add four more lines at the top of our data. We added an additional line in order for me to add the 28 February balance to check that the bank balance agrees after I have added the transactions of the 1st of March. Now I copy the last four transactions and paste them at the first lines created for these transactions. Then I copy the balance calculation formula from the top to include all the transactions and I trace the opening balance of 6,329 and see that it agrees with the previous bank reconciliation. We no longer need the 28 February 2021 transaction line and I delete it. Knowing that the data is accurate, valid and complete, I can delete the column in which the bank balance was recalculated. At this stage we have all the transactions for the year contained in five columns in Excel. We have the date, the description, the debit, credit and balance. You will mostly receive your data from banks and other sources in this format with these headings. Unfortunately, the data needs to be reorganized and combined in order to get it in shape for importing it into Sage. But don't stress it. I'm going to show you exactly how it is done so that your import can be successful. You can follow the rest of the video with me. I have also made another video previously on how to import a CSV bank transaction file if you want to check that out as well. I prefer to work from templates when I can because I don't need to recreate the wheel so as to speak. In step 3, I'm getting the CSV file template for a Sage Bank import. The template can be found on our website and the link to the template is in the description area of this video. In the CSV file template, there must only be three columns of data and nothing more. If your file has data somewhere else in the file, the import will fail. The three headings that you must have are date, description and amount. The date format of the column must be day, month, year. The description and the amount columns format must be general. The template that I am presenting here is already pre-designed and ready to be followed as a guideline for importing bank transactions in Sage. The template has four lines of transactions which I will remove and replace with my own set of transactions that I will copy in. In step 4, I am going to reorganize my data according to the three columns of the bank import template. In step 4.1, I am going to sort the data according to the debit column for all the payments. In step 4.2, we delete the balance column. In step 4.3, we only need one column for the amounts, with the payments being a negative. They will be categorized as spent in Sage, and the receipts as a positive. This is simple to achieve by copying the data that we want and adding a negative to the formula equals minus C2. We then copy the formula down in the credit column to include all the debit transactions. I need to turn the formula into a value because I'm going to delete the debit column. This I do by copying the data and pasting it as a value. I then delete the third column with the heading debits. It is important to know that your data import will fail if any of the cells has more than 100 characters. The description column of my data is the only one that I need to check because it is the only one that seems long. For counting and returning a value of the number of characters in a cell, I'm going to use the len formula in Excel. Starting at the description cell equals len b2. I get 65 as the number of characters counted in that cell. To give me the count of all the cells, we copy the formula down to all the data. I give the column a temporary heading to identify it using length. Then I sort the data in the newly called length column from largest to smallest. The values returned gives me two cells that are more than 100 characters, but it could have been many more cells. I'm going to give you a formula now that you can use on a large number of cells 
to reduce their length. The formula is the left formula, where I keep the data from the left, B2 for the cell that I want to reduce the characters, and then less the difference between the count of D2 and 100. I'm going to leave the formula on the screen for a few seconds to enable you to dot it down because the formula is a bit tricky. In column F, I'm quickly checking that the formula worked and that there are only 100 characters in the cell E2. I now copy the formula to all the cells that have more than 100 characters and I replace the old description data with the new reduced data by copying and pasting the values. You can see in column D that the number of characters is now only 100. It is important to note that I've removed the excess characters from the right and only on two cells, but there could have been hundreds of these cells. Hopefully by following this process you will be able to handle large amounts of data yourself. I don't need columns E, F and D anymore and I delete them. I scroll to the bottom of the data in order to count the number of rows. There are 581 entries minus the heading which means that I must have 580 transactions imported into Sage Accounting. If I get that right, my import will be successful. Please be aware of the 2000 limit on unallocated transactions in Sage Banking. If you have more than 2000 transactions, you will need to first mark transactions as reviewed and have them removed from the new transaction screen to the reviewed screen before you can add more transactions again. In step 5, I am going to select all my data excluding the headers, copy and replace the data in the Sage Bank import template file, but keeping the templates header row. I then save the file under a new name in order to keep my import template intact. I'm going to rename the file to Sage YouTube Import from PDF. Now my file is ready for import. The next step is a little bit scary because if the import fails, you have to backtrack your steps to find the error. This can be time consuming and the most frustrating part of doing bank imports to Sage Accounting. But if you have followed my steps until now, you should be fine. Here I am in the dashboard screen of Sage Accounting. In the top navigation bar, go to Banking, down to Transactions and then to the right to Banking and click on it. In the list of banks, have your bank account selected. My default bank is already set. Under the new transaction screen, click on the blue Import Bank Statements button. Under the File Import Details section and next to the Import File Type, select CSV. Click on the Browse button next to the Import File. Select the CSV file you have prepared for the import. Minus the Sage YouTube Import from PDF file. And then click on Upload. Your file has now been selected for import and click on the blue Import File button. You will get the Please Wait widget. Once the import is complete, you will get the information widget saying your CSV file imported successfully, as well as the quantity of transactions imported. The 580 rows imported agrees with the rows counted earlier in the video. This gives me assurance that all the transactions have been successfully imported and I can now proceed with confidence allocating the bank transactions. As an additional check, I can also find the quantity of transactions by scrolling to the bottom of the screen of the bank transactions. You can see that there are 580 transactions displayed in the new transactions area of Sage Banking. This further proves that all the transactions were imported. Sage Banking is the most user-friendly, efficient software that I have tested thus far. Hopefully it is also clear to you why I prefer to use Dext and Sage to do all the difficult time-consuming tasks for me and assist the business to be easy, quick and precise. You can find a link to our website for more information about these cloud softwares in the description area of this video. Thanks for watching.